believe in yourself? Huh? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Believe in yourself. Yeah. Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Hey, this is the Manny Hall Show, episode number six. We're with Dexter Holmes, extraordinary barber, mentor, coach, great man of God. But we are here at his place of establishment. We're going to get the show kicked off. Episode six of the Manny Hall Show. Get ready, y'all. Getting right into it. What's up? What's, What's up, sir? On, How you uh, feeling? I'm all right. How's it going? For the people that don't know who you are, tell them who you are. Uh, Dexter Holmes. Mostly everybody calls me Mr. Dex. Okay. Um, one of the barbers over at the Uppercut Barbershop, 10505 Union. That's what's up. Shop that's what's up. How long you been cutting? Uh, 16 years. 16 years. Wow, so you got a lot of experience. Yeah, the more you do it, the better you get it. That's right. And what made you start cutting? I was tired of punching the clock every day. Yeah, I feel that. Um, I did that for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just time to do something else. Take on another venture. I got you, I got Still you. Still dealing with the public. Yeah, absolutely. So it worked out good. So for all the young cast that's thinking about becoming a barber, any tips? Um, I guess one of the, one of the better tips I could share is uh, being consistent. Okay. Uh, what I mean by being consistent is not only consistent in, um, in your work craft, but being consistent in coming to work every day. Gotcha, you know, okay. Set a time that you want to start, uh, set a time that you want to finish, and um, stick to that. So, what have you came across some lazy young guys? Yeah, I ain't going to say they lazy, but okay. they're just inconsistent in, in the work ethic that is involved um, in any craft that you do. Gotcha. Not just in barbering, but... In any craft you do, you have to be consistent in it. Now, why is that so important? Because people, after you build a certain clientele and a rapport with people, they start to depend on you. Okay. So it's kind of hard to depend on somebody that's going to be inconsistent in when they come to work, what day they come to work. Gotcha. How long they're going to be at work. <laughs> gotcha. So if you're going to serve the public, you're pretty much at the public's demand, so you need to be accessible for them. Gotcha. So what you're saying is like you could come across a really great barber, somebody she really digging, and he cutting your head good, lining you up, but then you wanna come back for a future appointment or hit him up and he's not dependable. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's awful, that's not cool. No, it's not good, and then it causes them to have to redirect their life again because they thought they found something that was gonna work in it consistently. And because it's not, it doesn't work out, so. Wow, okay. That's why they move from shop to shop, and some guys, um, just move around the different barbers. Gotcha, that makes sense. So what were you doing before you started barbering? I worked at the hospital, uh, lead dispatcher at the University Hospital Security Department for 10 years. Wow, okay. So what exactly did you do? Did you just straight security? Um, yeah. Okay. Where, at the, at the hospital? Yeah. No, the hospital, I covered um, the main campus of university. So um, I was the dispatch call center, so I took all of the phone calls, dispatched all the officers. Um, handle internal, external disasters, um, lockouts, pretty much just like a customer service. Gotcha. Did you um, come across some crazy stuff? Oh, yeah, all the time. Well, tell me a story. All the time. Um, I had a lady one time that called our office. I was working second shift, and um, she was in duress. So I could tell, like, she was from the phone conversation that um, it was something else going on on the line. Gotcha. Uh, come to find out this lady was um, being held hostage in her home and the only number she could think of was the main security line number um, at the hospital. So wow. I was able through conversation with her, able to get an address, um, call the police department and actually get them to go to the house she was at and they ended up catching the guy that had her hostage at her house. That's terrible. Yeah, so we met up. She probably came to the hospital about two months later Mm -hmm. to uh, introduce herself and um, say thank you. So, wow, you, you pretty much cool. saved her life. Yeah, it was pretty cool because she said it was a bad situation. You know, so that, you Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, so that was just one of the rewards from the job, just being able to, to help people. So in my next profession, when I got ready to leave, 
I still wanted to deal with the public. Um, so I decided to go to barber school. So I went to Lake Erie Barber College. And um, Was the process hard being a school? No, actually it wasn't. Um, it was my first time cutting, so everything was pretty new for me. So I didn't have any hands on. Okay. So everything that they were showing me, you know, was no resistance. Right. You know, sometimes when you know a craft and then you go to get taught the craft, there's a little resistance in it because you get under the impression that you know everything or you already know how to do it. Right. Uh, so it worked out pretty good. I think one of the main struggles in it was um, trying to support the family going through because it's a 10 month course. Okay. Um, it's eight hours a day. Um, I couldn't really work a second shift or a night shift job because I needed to be there with the kids um, to handle those type of responsibilities. So. So during that time, because, you know, I hear that some people go, like, to the barber school and then they could, you know, get, like, 5 to $10 sometimes. Right. Or cut. Tips. So normally okay. what happens is... Um, but the majority of it goes to yeah, the school. Yeah, it goes to the school. Okay. And so normally you work for tips. So if the school itself is only charging um, $6, then the school gets the $6 for the haircut. And then the client itself is... Um, to their discretion, can give you a tip. Gotcha. Um, so I know some guys do pretty good going for the tips on certain days, and then other guys, you know, get what you can going through. So it's okay. a process. But that's not something to really depend on. Nah, you won't be able to really take care of a whole lot of things that you might need to financially off of it, but, you know, you'll be able to eat through the day. <laughs> okay. So that helps. <laughs> gotcha. So what do a lot of cats do that, you know, Say I want to be a barber and I'm going to go through this school. Um, like to the pen, you know what I'm saying, as far as making a living. It's, it's, it's a living that can be made, but again, it takes you to be... You want to line? Okay. It takes you to be committed to it. Um, again, the craft itself, the more you do it, the better you get at it. You know, everybody's hand won't be the sharpest or the best, um, but it's enough to go around. But if you really work at it, um, pick up some techniques from other people, um, share some techniques with other people. You know, you can learn a lot of different things. There's so much that go into the industry. Um, they think that it's just about cutting hair, but you can do uh, relaxers. Uh, you can curl women's hair. Gotcha. You can do the eyebrows. You can do facials. And that's all part of the barber school. Right. That's all oh, wow. part of the teaching. But for the most part, we only elaborate some barbers just on like razor shaves and the actual cutting the hair period. So do you think that that information is missing out there? That no, you, they don't find out until they go to school? Yeah, they don't find out until they go to school, but then as the barber itself, he doesn't promote it, you know, for services that he's rendering out of his chair. Okay. Uh, so Why like, is that? I think because it's easier to just do the hair cutting. They okay. really don't want to be possibly bothered with some of the other stuff that they are so being learned and taught to do. Um, they just don't want to elaborate on those things, so okay. I try to use all But that is things. actually some more money that could be yeah, had in their pocket. Yeah, some more money they can be getting at that time, and, and it also will help you uh, grow with your clientele. Gotcha. You don't want to limit yourself to just uh, men clientele or kids. You want to be able to have anybody come to you to get a service, whether it's a female, right. a kid, or a male. You, know, you want to be able to render some type of service to them. Um, from getting their eyebrows arched to possibly doing a relaxer and a wrap for a woman and just not limiting yourself to the crowd. It totally makes sense. So you can really begin to do your thing if you yeah, diversify in the sense. Yeah, I've been there 17 years and, um, you know, it's just a process. You know, it didn't happen overnight. Um, <laughs> most of the stuff that I learned when I came out of barber school yeah. Um, I wasn't able to apply it to everybody's head. So, again, they teach you great techniques. Now, why is that? Why is there a difference? Um, because of, I think more so because they, they have a format that they try to teach you from, which is the great format. Okay. But at the same time, once you get out here, everybody's head is different. You know, everybody's hairline, is it grows different. Um, somebody else has already put their hand on it might have moved it or adjusted it some from its natural state. Gotcha. So therefore, those techniques are good. Uh, they'll help you just about in any situation. But it just depends on the client that's in your chair. What's, up, what's going on with the way that their hair is developing, the way that it's grown. So you use those techniques um, to help you get the job done. 
but you just can't apply the same techniques to every head as a discipline. To say, hey, I'm gonna cut everybody's head this way. It's not gonna work that way. <laughs> okay. It just doesn't. And then like with the hair texture being different. Right, texture. And then the way um, they want it. The way that they want it, the way that it has already been cut uh, versus how you want to cut it. You know, those things just don't work that way. So, so you can really have something. a barber that has messed somebody's hairline up for years. Right. And then you get it. And you want to cut it the way you've been taught and it's not going to work that way. Okay. Because of the way that it's already been adjusted. So. Um, so how do you deal with those like hairline issues with a client? Um, so you got somebody that the hairline messed up, but you know, in order to repair it, you got to begin to adjust in a different way. And it might, you know, make them a little bit bothered the way you're doing it. Well, the first thing you always want to do is have a communication okay. um, with the client. So the first thing they want to, you know, you look and see what you're doing, what you're working with, find out what it is that they want. Um, you figure out in your mind what it is you have to do to achieve it. And then you give, you know, make them a part of the haircut by explaining to them what you can do versus for what they want. And then you can um, start to what I call is recovery. So if the line has been pushed back, you have to explain to the client that it's going to take a minute for it to grow back. This is why it's going to look this way. And then sometimes they want you to just go ahead and push it back like it is. So, okay. again, you're here to serve the client. So you have to get a client. So even even though you know you might be doing something that's going to look whack or stupid, it's really about making that, that client happy? Right, exactly. At the end of the day, you want your client satisfied when they leave your shit. Because you want them to come back. But what if they're asking you to cut them in a way that it's going to make you look bad as a barber, though? Well, again, it depends on why you're in this industry. Okay. I mean, because at the end of the day, uh, it's a customer service. And in and, and applying customer service, you want to make sure that the client is always happy. So. Okay. That totally makes sense. And it's just a process. I mean, things happen. Uh, you might cut somebody here, but they might not like it. You know, so what do you do in that situation? So you, they don't teach you all that in barber school. <laughs> They don't teach you, but if you mess a guy hair up, you have these options to do to fix the problem. And those are things you have to figure out as you go. So who's out there that they can really hear that from? Um, I mean, do you guys like as barbers, like all oh, hook up once a month or once a quarter to say, hey, can we talk about what's been going on in the industry? Or is everybody kind of selfish in that sense? I, yeah, they are selfish in it, but you do get some of the fellas that corroborate together and they, they discuss certain things. Okay. Um, so from those conversations, you can gather what's going on in their shop. And if you haven't experienced it, it's something that you can look out for. Yeah. Um, if it's some technique that they use or a conversation that help them get out of it, mm -hmm. um, to again, to turn a bad situation into a good situation, then you keep all those different techniques and uh, you just apply them when the opportunity presents itself. That makes sense. So starting off, is it like a slow grind or can it be like super um, success overnight? Uh, well, no, it's, it's definitely work in progress. I mean, you, you are your best salesperson. So uh, word of mouth is good, advertising is good. Uh, you can get you some business cards, you can get you some flyers. How hard should somebody go really in social media? Well, social media is always twofold. It can help you or it can hurt you. Okay. <laughs> you know, you can, you can put some, some things out there and then you run into that guy that you had a problem with that's on social media. And the next thing you know, he bad my mm. But that's just how the industry goes. You're not okay. gonna satisfy everybody. So you gotta everybody. take the good with the bad yeah, though. You're not gonna satisfy everybody and that's just how it goes. So it's a part of it. Um, there's nothing to be upset about. There's nothing to hate on another guy because the guy leave your chair and end up in somebody else's chair. You know, you make the best of whatever it is. Um, with your clients. I mean, that's just all a, a part of it, though. Right, whether it's a 20-year relationship or if it's just a two-month relationship, you always want to make an impact on the time that you have with that client. So it's about building relationships, too? Yeah, all the time, because one relationship can connect to another relationship that opens the door for other relationships. So um, depending on how you handle the situation, depending on how you treat the client, um, those can open up doors like that for you. That makes sense. So what what part does like family plan this whole thing with your balance that you gotta have? Um, family planning, um, again, the inconsistency um, with your finances because every day is not a great day. 
every month is not a great month. So it's nothing that you can say, well, I know this week I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that because it's not like punching a time clock where you're on the salad. Um, so you, you pretty much just have to try to become a, a good steward over your finances, uh, making good decisions with it. Um, try not to get into bad habits. Um, some of the bad habits in this industry is as soon as you make it, you go spend it. <laughs> right. So you got to have discipline starting out um, and try to keep those discipline. I know when situations arise and circumstances come up, um, and you got to do what you got to do. That's understandable. But as soon as you can get back on track uh, with your basic fundamentals for yourself and your work ethic, then you get back to it and just stick to the grind as long as you can. It makes sense. You know, um, another good technique, uh, you know, the barbershops for so long have such a bad name, uh, per se, with females, being able to, to sit in the shop. Um, so what you want to try to do is watch the conversation, limit the conversation, so it never makes anybody uncomfortable, whether it's your client or somebody just with your client. Okay. You know, so kind of watch the language, kind of watch um, conversation, the topics, you know, try to keep it neutral and uh, so that everybody can be. Well, how do you do that? Because, I mean, you got some people that want to talk about sports um, and you got some cats just want to talk about women, period. I think sometimes it really comes down to just respect. You know, you want to treat that client sometimes better than you want someone else to treat you. So you try to try to steer conversations, try to get off conversations and it, if it really got out of hand, you just take control of the environment and say, hey, you know what, we, we're not going to discuss that here today. Or let's be mindful of the people that's in the shop. You know, because the last thing you want to do is offend somebody. Have you ever had to have one of them tough conversations? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's part of it. Uh, whether it's with another um, barber that's with you in the shop or one of your clients. And sometimes you get your clients to come in and want to have that type of conversation with them. Um, with you or somebody else, but then you have other people that could possibly be offended. So it's just gotcha. pretty much an awareness thing. You know, you can't control the conversation, but you should be aware of, you know, what the conversations are because you never know who's connected to who or where your next client is coming from yeah. or your next several clients <laughs> right. for that matter. So you want to always keep that in the forefront um, of what's going on in the shop and with your client. So then what are you doing in those situations? Because you're a brought up woman too. Now, you know, there's another aspect of that whole thing where sometimes you got an attractive woman, she come to get her boy's haircut. And daddy's not around, had no father figure. So she's constantly in there. And you know that she begins to flirt with you a lot. Right. But then you as a married man, how do you deal with those situations? Um, you have to have restraint. Okay. <laughs> you know, you have to remember your vows. Um, even even though this might mess up your tip, because you know oh, she's yeah. throwing you extra ten or fifteen. Yeah, sometimes all money is not good money. Okay. And then you got to consider too, if if you do find yourself in that situation and you cross over, I can guarantee you nine times out of ten it's gonna hit you in your pocket. Mm. So that person at, at at one time, because of the attraction, because things get off base, um, goes from you becoming one having one paying client to now you you got a, a favor client. <laughs> Wow, that makes so, sense. Now this client that was paying you because you started to date them, now they have become a favorite client. So that takes away from what you have at home, or if you don't have nobody at home, it takes away from something else that you could have been doing with that. Okay. You know, it's not to say it doesn't happen. It's not to say that you might not give one of your clients um, a free haircut, you know, or a discount on a haircut. But you just got to be mindful. The more discounts and the more free stuff you get away, the hungrier you can become. So yeah, that makes sense. comes down to discipline as well. So then what about the young guys that's not married? They don't have nobody that they're necessarily committed to. Well, but the opportunity that, to run through women is right there. Right, definitely. They definitely have an opportunity um, to meet and then to date. But again, you got to, you got to separate the two. Um, there's nothing wrong with meeting somebody. And then, I mean, you might until meet that one um, at the shop. And it could turn great. But what if it doesn't? And then the next person comes and you think, oh, this is that person. And that doesn't work. And then the next person comes. Right. You done set a trend and set yourself up. And then when you take time and look back, you say, wow, you know, I wasted a lot of time. I gave away a lot of money. And then you find yourself complaining. So sometimes your answer is always could be right there in front of you. You just need to 
have your eyes open enough so that you can see it or hear it. Okay. So there is some aspect of like integrity and having a good character out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it just, and that, that comes from development. I mean, where I am right now, I wasn't always there. I used to be that dude, so I understand. So I try to share uh, with the younger cats, um, um, be transparent as I can with them. So and what was that experience like and what did you learn from it? Um, <laughs> like I said, it can turn into something good or bad. So it, it can go from that person paying you to the next time um, they're not paying. And then also things always change. So instead she was just bringing just maybe her son in a situation like that. And then the next time she comes, she comes with her son and a friend or a son and a cousin or one of her nephews. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So it, it doesn't stop. <laughs> okay. You know, because you have, um, you, you started that. And if you don't set some ground rules, set some boundaries early in a relationship like that, then, um, you know, you set yourself up so possibly having things to be altered. And one of those things is your finances. All right. So for all the entrepreneurs out there that it's not necessarily a barber, they might be a stylist, they might be electrician, landscaping, whatever the case, they're doing their thing. What advice do you have for them about that grind? Um, be consistent in it. Um, if, if it's your passion, uh, get at it and work at it. You know, it's um, something that has to be worked at. Um, it's not going to be always good. And when you start off, it's not always going to be great. You know, so just be patient. Um, work hard. Uh, work smart. Try to learn yourself, educate yourself in that field as much as you can. Um, if you can't take classes, um, there's plenty of things online. Um, you can have conversations with other people that are in that field, uh -huh. that's, that's been in that field. And don't ever think that you know everything. Okay. Always keep yourself open to learn and to listen. You know, you might pick up something that you didn't know, and you definitely might be able to add to something that you already did know. So just stay optimistic about it. Never close out your ears or your eyes while you're in the profession that you're in. So it's always something to learn. Yes, always. And always you can learn from somebody. And sometimes, most of the times, you might learn from somebody that you didn't think that you was going to learn from. Do you think it's enough patience out there? No, patience is something that's just got to be developed. Um, yeah. You can't go pour it in the glass <laughs> and <laughs> say, you know, I'm going to drink this up, and then after that, I'm going to have patience. You know, there's, uh, in order for anything to get better, it has to be tested. That's the only way that you know that you have. And that patience is hard, though, bro. Yeah, it's definitely hard. You know, you, it, and, and the key to it is you have to want to have it. It just don't sneak up one day and you say, hey, I got patience now. Yeah. You know, from um, working with kids to dealing with your spouses to, to dealing with things on your job, you know, dealing with change. You know, it's a, it's a lot to deal with, so... Uh, and if it gets slow, I mean, find something else to do. Add to that. Just don't put all your, your eggs in one basket. So starting off, like, why are you trying to get this business off the ground? Make sure you have another hustle, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. You got to have it. You know, you got to have something else to fall back on, um, to add to it. Um, because this profession sometimes becomes inconsistent. Uh, and at the end of the day, you still got to eat. You still got responsibility. Right. And, and, and in most situations, you always have somebody depending on you. So right. in order not to first let yourself down, you don't want to let them down. So, you know, you do what you have to do. Now, in your line of business, let's talk about taxes. Because, yep. I mean, hey, we're in December now, coming up on January. Is it hard and complicated to do the right thing with um, your taxes? Because, I mean, y'all got money coming in cash for the right. most part. It's, it's, it, again, it takes that discipline. Um, starting off, you probably wouldn't. Um, want to get into it and, and, and just spend all of your money, you know, eventually you do have to pay your taxes because by you being self-employed, your tax return is, is, is your paperwork that says that you're employed. It shows what you make, what you earned, and when you get ready to go apply for credit somewhere, this is most of the time what they ask for. Uh, so you, if you want to get on there and say, hey, I only made ten thousand dollars this year well you can't expect to go get no fifty thousand dollar purchase right. with with a ten dollar piece of paper 
That makes sense. Um, so, it has its so what's the best way to, to uh, make sure that your numbers are online, like a bookkeeper? Uh, yep, get you a bookkeeper. Um, invest in that. Um, go talk to some financial um, people, advisors that can stir you in the right direction when it comes down to the tax returns and what you should do and how you should do things. And again, um, this is their field work. So don't take for granted that they don't know what they're doing because they're not coming to you trying to cut hair. So don't you go to them trying to tell them about taxes. Go listen to them. See what works for you and what you can use. Makes sense. The hair looking good. So through all this time, when you were first starting off, what other hustle did you have? Um, I did carpet cleaning. I did security on the side. You know, whatever it was I could think of, landscaping. Um, I didn't just want to limit myself to, to, to one thing. I wanted to be able to do multi um, tasks or things that can bring in cash. So, especially being self-employed, it's, it's hard enough because again, you can't just bank on saying, hey, I'm gonna make this today. Makes sense. You never know how people want to come in or when they come in. So you want to have something else to fall back on. Love it. Any last words for the entrepreneurs um, out there, Dex? Work hard. Um, again, we down here at 10505 Union. Um, come through and see us. Come through and talk to us. Uh, we don't mind sharing. And uh, we'll be here. Any contact information? Facebook, yeah, phone call, number, whatever? Shop phone number is 341, area code 216-341-7931. And then my number is 216-551-3094. Gotcha. So you on Facebook, Instagram, one of them? Um, I don't have one. I'm just on um, Facebook. Okay. Uh, so you can reach me at um, Dexter Holmes um, if you need to. All right. I um, appreciate the time. For sure. Episode 6 of the Manny Hart Show. We are out, y'all. Be blessed.